Google is releasing their own competitor to Starlink, but it's not satellite internet. So what's going on with Project Tara? Tara isn't exactly a competitor. Unlike Starlink, it's a set of laser devices that can send high-speed data really far. It comes out of Project Loon, which really was a Starlink competitor. They were putting balloons up into the stratosphere, like 20 miles up, beaming internet down from there. They were almost low Earth orbit satellites, but not quite. So you didn't need rockets to go all the way up to space, just the balloon, and it would float for ages going around and around in the high winds. And one of the technologies that came out of this was awesome lasers for high-speed internet at long ranges. So even though Project Loon has ended, they've spun out that laser laser technology as Project R. So if it's not up in balloons or satellites, how are these lasers being used? Well, they can be used by internet service providers to beam internet to wherever they need it. But it's got to be line of sight. So you can picture a cell phone tower. They can put a bunch of these lasers up, pointing potentially miles to people's houses, where they can have a laser receiver on the roof running internet in, much the way a Starlink would. So this is really a toolkit for internet service providers to beam internet really far. If it's terrestrial, why would you use that instead of cable? Well, because it can go miles at the kind of speeds that today you need a fiber optic cable for. It means for all these sort of rural environments, there are plenty of houses that are three miles from their neighbor. And it can be very, very difficult or impossible to get a cable company to agree to run three miles of cable just to get to your one house. A lot of these people are using Starlink today because it's their only option for high-speed internet. This offers another possibility. But I'll say both of them have issues with line of sight. So Starlink, you need a view of the whole sky. You can't have trees over you, branches. It really has to be on the roof seeing the whole sky. And Project Tara, you have to be able to point this thing at the tower. It's got some smarts to align itself so you don't have to find green align it, but you have to get it basically pointed at the tower, the other tower basically pointed at it. And then it aligns itself with mirrors to be perfect. But it's a laser. An infrared laser. So snow and dust and rain, all of those are going to interfere with Tara, and probably, quite frankly, much worse than they do with Starlink. And I imagine trees and buildings could potentially be <laughs> yeah. major obstructions. Yeah, well. you need lines that Tara will not go through a tree, and there will be people who put it up and have a tree over a couple of years <laughs> grow up into the path of their laser, and they'll suddenly lose internet. That is going to happen to people. So you need real lines of sight, literal sight. It's infrared, right below red. So basically, it works the same as the visible light. What is the range in speed? They're talking about going 12 miles with 10 or possibly someday even 20 gigabits per second. These are really high speeds, but it's line of sight. So it's a lot higher than Starlink, but Starlink is the whole meal deal. Tara is just that last mile. So if everything on every side isn't that fast, you might not be getting those sort of speeds. If your internet service provider didn't connect a 20 gigabit internet connection to the laser, and you're not getting 20 gigabits even if the laser can do that. Tara is not going to be able to reach the ocean. No, no, no. So the Tara, they're talking about beaming 12 miles, which is enough to from some tower get to all these farmhouses that aren't worth reaching. But Starlink beams all the way to the middle of the ocean. We're talking about airplanes and ships that are thousands of miles from shore getting internet from space through Starlink. And Tara has no answer for that. I mean, Google used to have an answer, which was Project Loon. They were going to have balloons with these lasers floating everywhere, thousands and thousands, maybe millions of them. So wherever you were on Earth, there was some balloon within sight that you could bounce a laser off, but that didn't happen. They ended up deciding they couldn't make money on it and shut the thing down in 2021. Why do you think they couldn't make money on it? Maybe they were too early. Maybe they needed too many balloons. My suspicion is, in the end, it was just a pricing issue. If you read the old stuff from the Google people talking about, they were so excited to bring internet to every single person in Africa, in Brazil, in India. So if you were trying to price the internet for prices that every single person in Africa could afford, you're getting to very low prices. Where Starlink didn't start there. They started with RV for 150 bucks a month. Ships in the middle of the ocean for a thousand bucks a month. Airplanes have that $25,000 service and they're paying it, right? They've priced it higher. They're not reaching everyone, but get those prices. You land all the ships, that's real revenue. You have to get a lot of bandwidth to each ship if you're charging them a thousand bucks for internet, but it's not that huge a scaling problem. Starlink found a way to find the people who are willing to pay pretty real money and get them going. And as it becomes more and more popular, they can probably draw prices and improve technology and eventually get to a point where maybe they they will be able to bring internet to everyone in Africa. But I think that starting there, they just needed too many customers to realistically deliver. They say that these balloons can cover an 
area of 11,000 square kilometers. That's about 200 cell phone towers. And I can't imagine that a balloon is more expensive than a satellite. Right. So, I mean, that's a tenth of the way up to where the Starlink satellites are. So you definitely need a lot more of these balloons. But you don't need rockets to launch them. Mm -hmm. They had a machine that was launching a balloon every 30 minutes. Just filled it up with hot air and let it go. 48 balloons a day. But without rockets, you could just be launching them day and night. And it could have been a lot, lot cheaper. So my suspicion is there was a pricing model where this all could have worked out great for Google. Interestingly, the balloons, they would use lasers to get internet to the balloons. And that's what became this Project Tar. But then they would just beam down 4G LTE. They were cell phone towers 20 miles up, which of course is now what Starlink is starting to evolve their satellites into. But Loon started there. These things were cell phone towers beaming down 4G service. So you could use whatever cell phone or whatever, if you got a Project Lean SIM card, you could get phone service from them. So is Speedify going to work with Project Tara? Sure. Speedify works with anything that shows up looking like an internet connection. And so of course, Speedify lets you combine multiple connections. So you can take this Tara link and when it's working great, you can use it. When it starts snowing or whatever and the link fails, Speedify will instantly switch over to whatever else you have. Perhaps your Starlink. Maybe even just some old 3G connection you have that you, you keep around so that when it snows, we can fail over instantly and keep you online until the snow stops and your laser goes back and we can switch you right back. So having backups, a lot of this stuff, Starlink, it, it's easy for weather or something to your dish to fall over, something to land. Cats, cats keep climbing on people's Starlink dishes and to have it switch to 4G or switch to a laser or something or even DSL. So I think Speedify is a real opportunity to put all these technologies together, each of which has like real strengths but real weaknesses and give you something that's really good enough to use, lie on. Even Tara and Starlink. Starlink together. Tara and Starlink. That's probably a great combination. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tech discussions like this one.